Welcome back, class. Last week, we filled out our database by adding values for our three explanatory variables, grit, genes, and privilege, using scores for each rider based on their answers to my questionnaire, as well as the riding club they trained with. In this class, we'll investigate whether increasing values of M in our database tend to be associated with increasing values of G, R, G, E, or I, N. In statistics, the word correlation describes this kind of association. Let's first look at M versus GR scores. Here's an XY plot of M versus GR. The x-axis measures the rider's GR scores, ranked from lowest to highest. The y-axis measures each rider's M score. For example, this rider's GR score was 2, and she rode 23 miles. The first impression I get looking at this plot is that the points look like a swarm of flies. But on a closer look, it does appear that the higher M values tend to be associated with higher GR scores, and vice versa. That's confirmed when I ask Excel to fit a trend line to the plot. Excel's trend line shows how the values of M change on average as the values of GR increase. However, another thing to observe here is that some riders with low GR scores perform better than riders with higher GR scores. So clearly, GR scores don't entirely explain the variation in M. Here's the XY plot of M versus GE scores. Excel's trend line here is quite a bit flatter, suggesting that GE scores have less of an impact on M compared to GR scores. And here's the plot of M versus I N. There are only three values on the x-axis here, one for the apples, two for the oranges, and three for the grapes. But the trend line is closer to the one we saw for GR scores. So I N appears to have nearly as much influence on M as GR does. But here again, there's plenty of overlap. I N appears to explain much of the variation in M, but I N is by no means the whole story. As I mentioned at the beginning of class, we say that two variables are correlated when variations in the values of one tend to be associated with variations in the values of the other. And when this is true, knowing the value of x can be useful for predicting the corresponding value of y, as we see here for m versus gr and m versus in. Correlation can be strong or weak. When the correlation between x and y is strong, Variations in X explain quite a lot of the variation in Y, and predictions of Y based on knowing the value of X are more certain. When correlation is weak, variations in X explain very little of the variation in Y, and prediction of Y is more uncertain. Correlation can also be either positive or negative. Positive correlation means that the value of Y increases as the value of X increases, and negative correlation means that the value of y decreases as the value of x increases. We measure the strength of correlation with a statistic called the coefficient of correlation, usually designated by the Greek letter rho, which is written like a lowercase p. Rho is a fraction that can vary between 0 and 1. The fraction measures the proportion of the total variation in y that is explained by variation in x. When rho equals zero, it means that the variation of x doesn't explain any of the variation in y, and we say that x and y are perfectly uncorrelated. When rho equals one, this means that the variation of x entirely explains the variation in y, and we say that x and y are perfectly correlated. There's an algorithm in Excel that calculates rho for any array of xy pairs. To see how the algorithm works, Here's an array of xy values and a plot of y versus x. Excel's algorithm measures the variation in y by drawing a horizontal line on the plot at the average value of y and summing the squares of the differences between each data point and this line. Why square the differences? Because half of them are positive and half are negative. If you sum them without squaring them, they cancel each other out and the result is zero. But if you square them first, the negative differences become positive, and you can sum them without cancellation. 
So the sum of these squared differences is Excel's measure of the total variation in Y, which I will call TV. Next, Excel fits a trend line to the plot. The trend line minimizes the distance between each data point and the line. Excel then sums the squared differences between each data point and the trend line. This sum measures the variation in Y that is not explained by variation in X. It's the unexplained variation in Y, so I'll call this UV. Now, since TV is total variation and UV is unexplained variation, then TV minus UV is explained variation, which I will call EV. The ratio of EV to TV measures the proportion of squared variation in Y that is explained by squared variation in X. Rho is equal to the square root of this ratio. Let's now look at the correlations between M and each of the explanatory variables in our data set. Here's the XY plot of M versus GR. Excel calculates that Rho for this pair of variables is 0 0.53, which is moderately strong. For M versus GE, Rho is 0 0.27. This is fairly weak, but it's not zero. A few minutes ago, when we looked at this XY plot, we didn't see any evidence of a relationship between M and GE, but the more rigorous calculation of Rho shows that a rather weak relationship does in fact exist. Finally, the correlation between M and IN is 0 0.54, which is just a little bit stronger than the correlation between M and GR. Next week, I'll introduce you to another useful tool for describing the relationship between a dependent variable and its explanatory variables. The tool is called regression analysis. Using regression, we'll be able to write equations that describe mathematically the relationships we are exploring. See you next week.